Hi friends, hope you are doing well. I'm Dr. Ganguly. Welcome to my channel. Today's topic is somewhat of the dark side and it's an important topic because what has happened is that in many countries there is a lot of pressure on students to complete their PhD degree. And what has happened is that the university systems, the academic systems and the government want a lot of PhD students, want these guys to write good papers, sometimes they have mandated publications for PhD students and so on. And this has resulted in some of the students becoming very desperate and going for behaviors which are not exactly ethical in nature. So today I'm going to discuss five scenes of PhD students and these are the scenes which not only corrupt the university and PhD system, it also results in publications which are essentially not correct, which pollute the scientific literature and the research literature. And also in the long run, it has negative consequences for the student himself because what may happen is that this person may be found out later and whatever rank or position he has obtained through these means may be removed from him. So there have been many cases where the PhD degree has actually been denied or rescinded because of plagiarism and so on. So let us discuss these five sins today and whether you are a PhD student or a PhD supervisor, it's a good idea to know these things because sometimes what happens is that you may be too harsh on the student and the student is resorting to some of these conducts. So keep in mind that an open communication is very important with PhD students when PhD advisors are concerned and the committee members also, that is the PhD committee should try to ensure that these academic crimes are kept to a minimum. So the number one issue here is getting the PhD proposal from somewhere else. And this has actually generated a kind of industry out there where there are some people who have already obtained PhD, who are probably researchers in the field and they have left their research tasks and now they are in the process of actually trying to help out various students. But do remember that it is the job of the PhD student to actually come up with the research proposal or the PhD proposal in conjunction with his supervisor. So it is inappropriate to actually go to somebody else and get the PhD proposal from them. Now this person may give you a canned PhD proposal but it's very likely that this PhD proposal is something which is coming from somewhere else. And also the fact remains that most of the learning which takes place during the PhD is through the process of the literature survey and the papers you go through. And if you are getting the PhD proposal from somewhere, you are essentially bypassing these processes and so your learning is going to be incomplete. Now the next sin is getting papers from somewhere else and unfortunately this is also something which has been going on and what happens here is that there are certain people who are going to write a particular paper and they are going to put somebody's name on that paper and this kind of racket is going on in various places and again here the problem is that this is not your work this is not research which you have done you may get your name on the paper but this name is not going to be something which is actually earned. So whatever degree you get out of this particular process is going to be somewhat of a sham degree. And again, it's very important for PhD supervisors and people who are responsible at the university to make sure that when a student has written a paper, he understands all the things inside the paper. So it's very important to have regular discussions with the student, ask probing questions and also question various figures, equations, tables, which they have drawn up to make sure that this is actually the work of the student. So again, this is one of the tasks of the PhD advisor and also to some extent of the committee members who every now and then get papers and proposals from the student. Now the next sin is the biggest sin and this is getting the thesis written by somebody else and unfortunately this also is something which has been going on for some time and here there are people who will actually write a PhD thesis for somebody so you can think of this as a fake PhD thesis and what happens here is that 
the people essentially do a lot of plagiarism from various sources and they come up with a document which looks like a PhD thesis and in some cases if PhD supervisors are very lax then this kind of document may even go through. Now do remember that when you write a PhD thesis you are supposed to confer with only your PhD supervisor and therefore if you are also seeking too much help from somebody else in terms of writing in terms of putting everything together that is not an appropriate thing to do you may actually be okay if you write the thesis out and get it corrected for just the English language by somebody else that is legitimate but if somebody is contributing significantly to the technical content itself to coming up with various results equations various experiments and so on then this is certainly not a kosher thing to do and th this thesis is essentially like a fake document now the next sin is fabrication of results and data and again unfortunately this is something which goes on in science every now and then and various people are found out if they have done this kind of fabrication again some of these things happen in countries where a lot of pressure is being put on the faculty and the students to publish papers in high impact journals and sometimes this even happens in the bio and life sciences type of field where not only this kind of false research has a negative effect on the field but actually it can have deleterious consequences for people in general for life sciences and so on so these are very bad things to do and therefore it's always a good idea to refrain from any fabrication of results and data and if something like this is going on in your lab and you are a PhD student you are supposed to report this to the department chair so that is always the best idea to do is that you collect some information about this process and report this particular fact because if these things go on in the university and the research lab concern your own degree will be in jeopardy down the road because sooner or later these kind of things get found out and people are going to cast aspersion on your own degree and your university. Finally, there is the sin of plagiarism and plagiarism unfortunately has become quite rampant because people do not like to write things themselves. They find the task of paraphrasing very boring so there is a tendency of copying and pasting documents. Unfortunately, PDF documents can be converted into Word and into LaTeX documents very quickly. So do keep in mind that there are many plagiarism softwares out there such as Turnitin which are going to catch this. And even if you have managed to sneak through because your university doesn't have a good software process or doesn't do a good check on these kind of documents, sooner or later somebody is going to figure out that paragraphs are taken from somewhere else and all they have to do is they have to raise this issue with the university presidents or the directors or the deans and then you are going to be in a lot of trouble so it's a good idea not to get into plagiarism and always to write things in your own words so your own words may not be so great but make sure you write things in your own word even if you take recourse to chat gpt to create content do remember that chat gpt simply browses through whatever is already there in the internet in terms of published material and then rehashes this into new documents and so on so you are not exactly creating anything new if you are using content provided by chat gpt so you can use these ai softwares to essentially do some research figure out some things but again take whatever comes out from them and then rewrite it in your own words before you put it in any paper or thesis which you are using to get your degree. Now finally to conclude I would say that there are many ways to try to bring this kind of problem down, these kind of sins down and one of the important things of course is that the PhD advisor has to be very careful in monitoring the activities of the student. So it's sometime there that new PhD supervisors are very gullible in terms of believing everything the students tell them but do remember that sometimes students are under a lot of pressure they also have a tendency to procrastinate they do not have good communication skills so instead of telling you that their experiment is not working that they are not getting positive results they may simply cook up data and show you in a graph so you need to be careful about how much pressure you put on the students and you need to have open communication lines 
sometimes problems do not work out and it's important to make sure that the students are able to tell you that things are not working out rather than go and fabricate material similarly one should be very careful about any kind of proposal about any kind of document paper thesis which is given to them and make sure to ask a lot of probing questions so whenever there is opportunity whether it's a comprehensive exam whether it is a phd proposal exam whether it is a phd colloquium or even the phd defense one should make sure that one subjects the student to considerable scrutiny so it's not enough to subject the thesis to considerable scrutiny during the exam the examiner should ask various probing and difficult questions so that he is satisfied that it's actually the student who has done all the research work and he essentially owns all the research which has been shown to him so this fact extends to any kind of academic interview system so if you are interviewing for any faculty candidate do go deep into the publications read the publications and ask the questions regarding the various publications the student has put forward and you will often find that the student may not have done all the work and in that case you can essentially reject this candidate so a lot of the onus about ensuring that academia is untainted by these kind of sins rests on the professors the lecturers and the department chairman and so on so it's very important to subject all the students all the new researchers to severe academic scrutiny in all cases so this was my take about some of the practices which unfortunately taint the academic system i hope you benefit from this video and i will see you in a video sometime soon see you then